I want to be very intentional right now. If you're in this place today, I want to share with you steps to peace with God. And I want, if, if everybody can stay just as focused and dialed in, this is between everybody in this room and God. This is so important. God's going to do something here. I want my elders to be ready to come and pray with folks. You know, most people have an idea of what they believe it will take to be accepted by God. After all, who likes the idea of leaving this life without being on good terms with God? Thankfully, it's possible to be certain that you've made peace with God, but the way must be chosen during this life. So here, here are the steps drawn from God's Word, the Bible. Number one, we must understand God's purposes, peace and eternal life. God loves you and wants you to experience peace and eternal life, a fulfilling life. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible also says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So now why don't most people have this peace and the fulfilling abundant life that God intended for us to have? Well, we must admit the problem our sin and separation God did not create us like robots to automatically love and mechanically obey him God gave us a will a free will and the freedom to choose the first man and woman chose to disobey God and go their own willful way and and we still make that choice today and this results in separation from God you know the Bible says for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God for the wages of sin is death so people tried many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. You know, there's a, the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. No bridge reaches God except one. That's the cross of Jesus. Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. Though he was God's sinless son, he became a human, took our place, and paid the penalty for our sin, bridging the gap between God and us. The Bible says for there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Christ suffered once for sins, the righteousness, excuse me, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. God shows his love for us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he was raised on the third day. God has provided the only way to forgiveness of sin and eternal life. But each person must make a choice. And that choice is to embrace the truth. You must receive Christ. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive Him by personal choice. Not grandma or granddaddy or aunt or uncle. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive Him by personal choice. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and eat with him and he with me. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. The Bible says to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. So now we have a decision to make. By God's grace, you're able to make this decision because this decision has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do by the grace of God, His amazing grace. So the choice is yours today. Will you receive Jesus Christ right now and trust in Him alone for forgiveness and eternal life? The Bible says that's the only way to find peace with God. Well, how do I do that, preacher? Well, first, you must admit your need, that you're a sinner in need of God's forgiveness, and that you need a Savior. 
Secondly, be willing to turn from trusting in anything else for eternal life and trust only in Jesus. Thirdly, believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross, came back to life from the grave, and is your only way to heaven. And then you receive Jesus' offer to forgive your sins and come into your life as your Savior. Now you may want to tell him in words like this. And here's what I want. I want everybody in this room to repeat this prayer after me. And then when we're done with this prayer, if you believe this in your heart and you've, you've said this prayer and it's not the prayer that saves you, we're all going to say this together. I want everybody to say it out loud. And then when we're done, I want you, if, you, if you've asked this, if, you, if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's what you're about to do, I want to ask you to stand up and you come to this altar and our elders and people will be here to pray with you and celebrate with you. So this is the prayer. And it's, the prayer that, it's not the prayer that saves you, but it's the intent of your heart. Let's say this together. Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I need everybody saying this. I believe that when you died, you were paying the penalty for my sins. I now receive you into my life. As my Savior. So I can have forgiveness and never ending life from God. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of eternal life. If you just prayed that prayer, I want you to stand to your feet. If you just prayed that prayer and you've never done that before and you know you need to be saved, just come. Stand up and come. We got our elders are coming now. They're, they're already making their way up here. And we'll pray with you. Today's the day of salvation.